The Oakley Kitchen Sink is a beast of a backpack. It comes with all the bells and whistles. But many people lose themselves on where do you decorate on this backpack. So on this episode of Decoration Myths, we're gonna challenge ourselves and test the limits on all the areas you can decorate on. Welcome everybody to another episode of Decoration Myths. I'm Stefan Bear from SNS Activewear. And I am scared about what's going to happen in this episode. Well, good to see you, Josh. So you feel a challenge coming. The challenge is definitely coming. I feel like I'm being set up on this yes. episode. Yeah, you're definitely being set up. So this has been a long time coming. What I'm wearing is the world famous Oakley kitchen sink. This is a beast of a backpack. It emulates toughness, style. It's a 34 liter bag. It weighs four pounds just by itself. And it's um, originally, you know, was tactical. It worked into the retail. People love it. They come out with new versions all the time. This is the style um, that we have exclusively at s, s But I tell you, the number one question is, I love the bag. I need the bag. I need the bag. How do I decorate it? Right? So here comes the challenge. Yeah, and I love the bag too. And, and, and I feel like we should set this one up just a little bit different. So yeah. uh, we planned some of these episodes. What are we gonna cover? And this item was thrown out as like, we wanna solve for decoration on this backpack. And the confident person that I am, yeah. I say, not only am I gonna decorate that backpack, but yeah. I'm gonna decorate that backpack in more locations than you ever imagined. Yeah. And I'm... then uh, after receiving the backpack, I instantly regretted uh, those words. <laughs> But we're going to give it a shot. We're going to decoration I love it. myths. That's what's all about. I dig it. So um, where do you see like common decoration areas? Like, so common decoration. So people have been successful decorating this area here. Because you can imagine when this bag fills up, mm -hmm. you have some nice decoration um, area there. And then this hard case on the top. Okay. They've decorated there as well. And then there's been some creativity. But... Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking there is a lot of room, I, and I've seen your magic. I mean, we've got the backpack straps. I mean, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Okay, you know? so uh, <laughs> let's go over to the heat press. I'm gonna take you through uh, my thought process and hitting some of these uh, locations right away at the heat press and kind of this print-on-demand environment. And so Perfect. first, uh, I've chosen the Hotronics Fusion heat press because it gives me a fair amount of clearance underneath the press to be able to kind of fit this bag, maneuver it, and try sure. to flip up or get inside some of these tough to print areas. Absolutely. And with heat printing, it's all about um, accuracy and time, temperature, and pressure. And so time and temperature are pretty easy. Um, pressure, on the other hand, on an item with all of these buckles and straps and sort of areas, um, that's the big challenge. And so my number one challenge is getting these print areas as flat as I possibly can. And so, I'm going to begin with my four by four attachment. And I love the four by four attachment because it helps me get into these little nooks and crannies yeah. of different products. I've used it for a lot of left chest logos, but I've never really uh, tried this bag before. So yeah, so these, you just, you just easily, undone. you just pull those out. They're parachute straps. Okay. So many of the uh, things that we have to get out of the way. Yeah, you know? and, and so when I'm examining a bag, I'm always worried about kind of like, melting a pocket together or getting to an area that there's an obstruction and sure. not really accounting for that. And so in this particular print area, that's the first one I'm gonna try. It seems easiest, if, if easy is a possibility here. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just gonna try to maneuver this bag under and kind of shimmy it there. And then sure. I am going to approach it from the side here just to hit this location, fold this up. And it looks like I'm able to get this print area relatively flat. Now, nice. you wanna consider um, setup time when you're trying to decorate a bag like this. It's definitely going to be uh, a little bit more tedious. There are heat presses that come on full cantilever stands. I don't have one in the studio. I wish I had one yeah. in the studio because that allows the bulk of the pack to hang completely below. Okay. Here I have a certain limited uh, throat, sure. but it's better than most machines that are available on the market. So let's start there. Let's make sure I get everything clear and out of the way. I'm gonna test uh, pressure first, and to test pressure, I'm gonna use just a normal cover sheet, kind of to protect the whole thing. 
make sure my swing away can slide in here okay. Let's lock this down. There's like no pressure there. Yeah. I want very light pressure here because keep in mind, this is a four by four attachment. So there's a lot of pressure being exerted on this big 16 by 20 platen down sure. onto this four by four attachment. But that helps to make sure it's nice and flat and ready to go. And then let's grab a transfer. So I'm gonna start just to tell this bag that I own it. I'm yeah. gonna start with the Stalls logo. A little confidence here. Um, kind of level that up. This is an area you may wanna use thermotape as you're working with this, because sure. you notice how kind of the print area just keeps sliding on me just a little bit. And so I'm gonna tape this into place. And it's a heavy duty fabric. Yeah. So what is the transfer that we're, we're looking at? Yeah, great question. So this is, I'm gonna be utilizing direct to film transfers across okay. most of this bag. Great. Um, I know you guys wanted to see a patch, so I guess we're gonna try that as well. Um, yeah. But we're gonna do a direct to film transfer first. And this is called our Ultra Color Max. And so it's 290 degrees, 12 to 15 seconds. Um, should be a hot peel. This is a little bit different fabric. I'm not sure, honestly, if it's nylon or poly, because yep. this is constructed of a lot of different materials. But I should have uh, good adhesion this here. This is that ballistic nylon, yeah. Oh, so it is a nylon, yeah. great. <laughs> so, yeah. See, I kept some of the challenges out, so. And then we release it, right? Wow. And I get the nice uh, print area there. So we've hit that kind of common uh, print location uh, on the bag uh, without much of an issue there. And so let's step up the level of difficulty here. So let's just say, I mean, what if I wanted to do there? That hangs out, right? Sure. So we have it loaded here. I just want to give a tip. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> and here you have some seam structure as well, okay? So these seams, and there's actually a zipper hidden behind here, um, that could potentially cause a challenge. So I'm going to add a heat press pillow underneath, underneath. Uh, the surface. And I'm just going to kind of move this on top. And now when I press that, all those zippers and all those seams sinks into the pillow should sink down yeah. in, right? And again, I'd like to flatten this a little bit. So I'll use a full cover sheet on this. And we're just going to try to flatten it to get me a, a better print area. You can see the bag's kind of standing up a little bit. Let's see if a little heat helps to react, uh, relax it a bit. And when you're using a pillow, uh, typically, I recommend a little more pressure just so the product has the ability to sink down in, okay. right? And you're going to get that even pressure. Let's go ahead and pull in. If you don't yeah, mind hold that. that. Absolutely. Let's pull in a SNS logo. Um, keep in mind, uh, you're going to want to order one of these bags. You're going to want to examine it and then get a good feel for design size. And so I'm going a little bit smaller on the design size here because I don't want to put that design too close to the seam. That's a pretty big drop off for pressure. And so I, I probably have issues with it sticking there. I still may have issues, but sure. um, I'm going to really fight through this even with more pressure than I did the first time. I was on a seven. This has a digital readout. So That's I'm going to give great. it a couple half turns. And I'm actually on an overload now, which is higher than a nine pressure, which is a max for the machine. And so I need that because it's so tight in there in between those seams and that structure. I just want to make sure all that blends in when get good pressure. This particular area of the bag doesn't seem too heat sensitive to me, so I'm not but concerned. It, this really uh, shows the importance of having a pillow pack right? like that. Yeah, pillows because are- Because you're, you're, you're giving it full force. Yeah, pillows are a critical accessory. I'm looking at, I mean, that wow. was pretty nice, actually. Better than I expected. All right. Two, four, two so far. I like it. Of course, we could brand this area, this area, all of that would be the same technique, so we won't waste our time there. Let's, um, the other common print area you said was up on this hard shell. It is. I mean, it's it's the most visible part of the bag. Yeah. Um, and they just have, it's great hardware. I mean, the, the Oakley detail and all the zipper poles and then the Ellipse logo, but this is front and center and it's probably the most used because it's called a, a tech compartment for your eyewear, you know, and phone and things like that. So this yeah, and, protects it quite a bit. And it is the most real estate too, I think. Like if you sure. want to go for like a larger size logo, I feel like this is the best spot to get it. Um, I'm hoping that this will fit over my four by four platen in the same way. So I make sure this is completely unzipped. 
try to maneuver the bag, wanna make sure I don't damage the bag, and then kind of stretch this over. And I'm feeling, right? I'm feeling to see, am I getting good pressure there? Is that zipper down over the edge? And actually I'm kind of locking it down over the edge. Yeah. And that is holding that Looks pretty like snug and beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a little gap in here, right? And so there's about, I would say, maybe about a quarter inch of distance between the pad and that hard shell. That has me a little bit concerned, but I think that it won't damage depending on the product. So let's start with a uh, basic direct -to film logo. We're gonna stick in the same kind of theme we've been doing. Probably should preheat this just to get a feel for that sure. pressure because we added a lot of dimension there with yeah. that hard shell. And remember, I was jamming on the pressure on the last one with the pillow. I really don't need to do that here. So that's my preheat. Get a, get a peek in. Thickness of the bag made my press pop a little bit there yeah. on the open. This may be an expensive episode if I break my press. Yeah. <laughs> Position that into place. Again, just because of the height of this, like I don't want the press to move the logo. And so I'd rather just use the small piece of tape and just tape the logo into place. That just eliminates one potential risk element for me. I have enough risk on this. I don't want to add any more to the process. All right. All right. 12 to 15 seconds uh, here. Um, again, I don't know if the material that the hard shell is made of is going to damage it all. So I'll run for the lowest amount, which will be the 12 That's seconds. Smart. Yeah. Seeing some action. Okay, we didn't get we didn't get enough pressure. You see how that's peeling yes. up right there? Yeah, right. I, I stopped because I don't want to damage it. I should have no issue applying to this. I think it's a, feels like a polyester fabric. Sure. So I know this product should work here actually better than it did on the nylon. So it's it's purely a pressure issue. Um, okay. We'll take it slow. Again, gonna crank it up just a little bit. Let's try that. And I did the 12 seconds. I'm gonna run at the full 15 now. So okay, good. May damage it, but it didn't work at the lowest settings. So let's try it at the you know the the longer dwell time in the true medium pressure. I'm zoned in. Yeah. What do you think? What's your prediction? I think it's gonna be a go. No problem. Hot peel. <laughs> Ran into the tape there, but no issues there. Wow. Now that one looks pretty. Good. I don't want to move it off there, but because uh, I'm going to try great. something different, but it's looking really That looks very cool. Sharp. Yeah. All right. And so, sorry. I know I'm, in, <laughs> I'm very curious on this episode. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and, and this is fun. So this is uh, three, not just an embroidered patch, not just a patch, yeah. but we had to pick the 3D embroidered <laughs> patch, right? And so there's a ton of dimension uh, to this, but, but I do think it matches the style of the bag nice. And if we can put a patch in this location, Nothing screams premium like this bag, plus Absolutely. a premium decoration. So let's position that into place. And, and you know, I wanted to try this first. I'm actually just gonna cover this because I'm gonna try the same uh, print zone because I think that's really the best print zone here. Wow, so you can do that with these patches, just cover up something. And I've seen that. So okay. when you spell something wrong or it's a yeah. brand logo that maybe didn't sell on the product, yeah. a lot of people use uh, patches or heat transfers to cover up mistakes. Right, wow. or to limit Good the tip. risk on the inventory. Look at that. So we didn't make a mistake. Let's make that clear. We're, yes. we're batting a three for three thousand here. And when I'm doing this, I'm going, because it's a dimensional patch, I'm going to use this eighth inch foam pad. Okay. And so this eighth inch foam pad is going to cover everything. And then I'm going to add another step just in case any of this bag's exposed directly to the heat and just protect the whole thing with a cover sheet. Can't hurt anything. Nice. Now, because I added the eighth inch foam pad and I'm coming with top heat only, I need to run this for about a 40 second dwell time. Technically, I should be at um, 305 degrees. So 15 degrees sure. raise, but just to save time on the episode, we're gonna run at 290 for the 40 seconds. Um, nice. The 10 degrees isn't gonna change the result as far as impacting the bag. All right. What do you think? I mean, we're four for four. I mean, you got 23 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So I can't even make a prediction on this. Sure. I think that if this works, 
I think this is probably the best branding opportunity on the bag for people to think about because not only could you do embroidered patches, you could do the flex style patches, you could do um, leather patches, which I think would be match this demographic and market well. Well, I think you you know you definitely want to go premium. I mean, this retails at you know two twenty five out in the market, so it is um, it's quite the bag. I'm gonna let the adhesive cool down, but that's on there. Oh yeah. And it looks sharp and like, let's let's just examine this closely. That looks great. I don't think that we've damaged this or changed the construction no. at all. <laughs> it's bulletproof. All right, you wanna stop there? Or you wanna keep going? No, let's keep going. All right, Yeah. so um, I'm not sure if you covered it yet. Who who are you typically seeing purchase this bag? Like what's it being used for? So, I mean, the, these are, these are purchased uh, quite a bit for incentive programs and um, Honestly, it's, you know, it, it's taste out in the market. I mean, the, the customer comes in and says, hey, we want to outfit our executive team in this bag. I've seen this, I, I've seen this in my travels from all sorts. I mean, it goes from construction to executive. It is, uh, it's a bag that's liked by everybody. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those, I have to have it situations. But a lot of people have, always ask that one question is we kind of get lost on what's possible to decorate on this bag because we want our logo on it. That, so. And so I'm going to try something different here. So you know that part where you kind of secure the water bottle or whatever is yes. down the side. Um, there are these uh, straps here, Velcro straps, and there's a bit of branding area available to us on those straps. Don't have quite the right attachment. So let me go just grab that real quick. <laughs> We're going to try our typically our sleeve and leg attachment. Oh, wow. Okay? That's a universal piece. Yeah, it can be used for anything. It's just our six by 20 platen, long and slender. And so lock that in. Now. So what are you thinking here? If I'm thinking about correctly, like, okay, so look, like looking at this side. Sure. See how, you know, these kind of wrap. So they need to attach, right? So I can't print the whole backside. It wouldn't show. So my branding area is pretty much right here on the edge. So I'm wondering if I can like undo these on one side, if I can, Pull them all up and oh, wow. use and tape them? a technique that, yeah, see, you yeah. know, right? You, yeah. We talked about that before. Yeah. And and tape those into place. And so let's grab it. You need nice, me to hold something? Uh, sure. Yeah. Long, nice long piece of tape here. I'm just going to try to, don't want to tape off my the area that I want to print. So tape that one on. Oh, come on. I think it's, it's just, there we go. I probably could get them all with one piece of tape, but I think I uh, just devote a piece of tape to each one here to make sure I get good contact. We have them all taped down and held. It's great. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, think about logo size, but here I'm just going to use a little brand icon, like the Stalls brand icon, and position those into place. This is a lot of tape, but if this is the only branding uh, location you're hitting on this bag, I think it can be easy enough. And there's probably some steps I could think about here in prep to make this a little bit easier as far as like. No, and, and this is great because it's an example of what's happening in the market. The market is looking for different locations from the traditional, you know, great. The outside pocket on a backpack, you know, that's ideal because it's the great logo coverage, but how can we up the game a little bit and get a little more branding out there? So dual hits are back and um, different locations are back. So. All right. So everything's taped into place. It shouldn't move on me. <laughs> let's right. cover it. Lock. Uh, and um, let's go ahead and lock this down. Don't need 40 seconds. That was for the last hit. So I'm going to break it down to the uh, 15 seconds. Close enough on my touchscreen display. I mean, I take advantage of the fact that I've in, in been in front of this machine quite a bit with you, but just this digital touch display on how you can regulate the whole process, it's amazing. It, it makes it to the degree accuracy, right? Yeah. To the digit pressure accuracy. And you know the temperature is accurate as well uh, on these machines. So you're taking like one element of guesswork out, then it just sure. becomes, can I get my item flat? Can I get to the pressure zones and will my transfer um, adhere? And so let's see. And we have adhesion. We don't have perfect adhesion. 
on this on this strap. Yeah, it's coming up a little bit on the top one. Yeah, but, but as long as I can get enough contact. Yeah. Uh, probably shouldn't remove that piece of yeah. tape because what I'm going to do now is hit it with the cover sheet. Yeah. Absolutely. So right. So see how, see how I'm learning. You you got to, you're going to be running this show by yourself here, Sam. <laughs> I feel like that should be an episode. Oh, I love it. All right. So we get everything there. This just lifted up on the edge. And honestly, I don't think it's an adhesion issue. I think it's a pressure issue because the edge of this Velcro strap is raised. And I'm like I said earlier in the episode, I'm right against that edge, right? So I'm sure. getting a little bit of drop off in pressure. So no problem. Cover it. When there's a drop off in pressure, give a little more pressure. And let's just do a finishing hit um, for a few seconds to try to blend everything in so nicely. Cool. Voila. Yeah, and now we have the completed result that I'm after. So I would take this as it's a just... lesson learned. Don't run so close to the edge with your logo. Uh, think about your logo. And then we can just pull the straps up. This is great. And, and the way, like, you just handled that one, and it was just printed. So it's, like, ready to go. Yeah, and, and so, I think tying these off is really going to complete the, the, the look. The look. So you can see, like, that's the branding area. That is fantastic. All right. So I tell you, I um, there's one request um, that always comes in is, can I do the backpack straps? Oh, the straps. Because the, that it's a, such a great branding location as you're, you're wearing it. These are front and center. True. Right? As you're walking, let's say, through the airport, for instance. And then you have to get some branding there. With this padding, I, you know, people are a little bit nervous. And then of course, as you mentioned, like, you know, you have a small space to work with. Yeah, so there's um, a couple things here. Um, number one is what we've proven is that we can decorate um, these strap areas. Yes. So number one is I'd have no issue where this buckles across the waist. Yeah, the sternum uh, Branding, strap, yeah. branding that with a company name, branding these pieces, branding any of these straps. But you're wanting to do the actual strap. And so, the risk here, because I've done these before, and let me get another attachment. I told you we're gonna use everything but the kitchen sink to yeah. decorate these ones, right? <laughs> and I need my 11 by 15, I'm thinking is the right size. So let me think about how this might work. And let's just let the heat press wear the backpack, if that's possible. Nope, it's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> so can bring that here. Might what have to gonna, do one at a time. We can do this. Yeah, yeah and, and a lot of people actually just want one, right? Like, um, you know, they just want another hit. There we go. Yeah, so maneuvering this bag, getting it on, is the most challenging thing. You're good. So I can get to that location, and then you can see like Stefan supporting it for me, but if I were setting up to do some production on a larger table, I'd probably set it up to, to kind of hold this in place. There's a strap here that I'm worried about. Um, I've seen people work with different clamps and different accessories to hold things into place. In this case, I'm just gonna use, see if the tape does the job to kind of hold that. And I'm worried about this interior material really sure. melting, and it may. We're at 290 degrees right now on the heat. Let me take uh, some of the logos we've been using. That one's a little bit big, so I'm just gonna put it in a different format. We're gonna cover the whole thing. Doing lots of thinking here. And see if we can melt something. <laughs> I think I moved the logo. Yes, I did. See, yeah. that's why you tape your logo. So let me try that again with taping my logo in place. So you can see like one of the key accessories that we're using throughout this episode and to accommodate challenges like this is uh, thermo tape. You can get the thermo tape, uh, two rolls, load up a dispenser here from stalls. We use it a lot for the hat press machine and decorating hats, but it's also used a lot for uh, these types of projects. So gonna go super light on the pressure here. We're gonna run it for the 12 seconds and we're gonna cross our fingers that we haven't completely melted the straps, and honestly, we may. And so if we melt the strap, I still have one more to play with. I'll probably reduce the heat down to 260 and see if I can get a better sure. result. Yeah, I lost everything uh, in the strap, I think, on that, so we'll see. 
So the branding looks great. Yeah. Uh, but we've definitely lost, like if you feel this, the plushness of oh, the wow. strap. Okay. Yeah, so it's the interior material that's being impacted by the heat. I think it looks great. Honestly, most people wouldn't notice, but you've certainly lost yeah. some of the dimension. So that's gonna be a choice that you're gonna have to make for this decoration. How important is that branding location? Set clear expectations for the client. Um, totally wearable, didn't damage it to where it's not gonna be wearable, but we lost uh, some of the- You lost the cushion, yeah. Yeah, the cushion of the piece. Interesting. So that was, uh, that's our challenge. So we can turn it down to 260 and try it again, but before we do that, any other areas of this bag that you think you want to try to tackle? I mean, you know, the only one, and, and this would be, you know, we've seen people put stuff on this type of faux leather, faux leather. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so let me unzip this because this is something pretty unique about this pack too, like this compartment, right? Yeah. So this compartment actually goes internally. So this is designed to... You know, if you have your shoes that you're packing, because it'll lay in the inside of the backpack and you can pack around it. Um, other people put gym clothes in there, whatever, or just like have an extra little stash area. So when this backpack is full okay. and it drops to the bottom, you do have visibility in this area. And so people have always been curious, what can I do there, right? Okay. But with all that lining, like embroidery is not an option because you're going through the lining and you could po possibly damage that inner pocket. Yeah. So. All right. Would you mind grabbing yeah. me that flexible application? Yeah, no pack? problem. And I'll just have you try to load this on. Um, so I'm going to take my 11 by 15 attachment out. And then I'm going to go back to the four by four, I think, to try first. And then what I'd like to do is kind of open this up. So you're seeing how I open sure. this up. And then I'm just going to try to get to that print. Again, there is a lining here, but I, you know, there's no way to get inside of that. So I'm just sure. going to have to test the limits and see if it's something that, that melts together. Um, these certainly scare me. Yeah. Uh, those, there's no getting around <laughs> I this. I think they scare people too. They yeah. have to hang off the yeah. edge. Yeah. There's no way to, to have those sure. just not hang off the edge to decorate this. And so I know that direct-to-film transfers don't typically respond well uh, to faux leather. So I'm hoping this design fits. It may not. So I've created a um, heat transfer vinyl design for the faux leather parts of this bag uh, to try. That might be a little bit too tight, but the main thing is it sticks and stays. So this isn't going to look aesthetically pleasing, but I will work to position this into place. Let's go ahead and tape this into place first. Okay. Again, lots of seam structure here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to need my little pillow inside of here. So that zipper and everything sinks down in and I have a prayer at yeah. success. This is, this is tight. Yeah, it's really tight. Like yeah. it's right on the edge too. So this is an area like it probably wouldn't be the first place. And I think that's what we're trying to teach in this episode. It wouldn't be the sure. first place I would sell, but if it was a must for a customer, we're going to know the answer. So I'm going to start by just tacking this to get rid of the carrier, because I know the carrier is going to leave an indentation mark on that area of the bag. Sure. All right. So I'm just giving it a couple seconds. Hopefully that's enough to release it without damaging. Pillow's hot. Yep, so that released. You can see a little fine indent of the carrier here. And okay. that's why I wanted to, again, tack it. And so now I can lay, I have two choices here, right? Um, I can use the flex pad that, sure. and, and put that over top. Usually that's how what I would do these faux leathers and shoes and handbag constructions. So I feel like that's safe, but I also don't want it to leave a pebbled effect. Because uh, sure. this is such a smooth uh, yeah, faux leather. Yeah, no, it's really clean, yeah. So I'm thinking the better option may be to just use my <clears throat> traditional cover sheet and just hit it for a few more seconds and see if it damage, damages okay. the, the faux leather. Because the flex pad is great, but again, with that pebble texture to it, like... Yeah, sometimes that indents. What's going to happen? So I just gave it about six to eight seconds to kind of finish it. And it looks like this it looks pretty material good. took the heat pretty well. You're seeing a little bit 
you know, but I think that's acceptable. So the heat transfer vinyl, and this is, uh, this is either ultra weed or glow in the dark. I'm, I'm not, could be either one, but it's a, I think it's a viable solution here. I personally, yeah. if I'm running a decoration shop yeah. and I'm in the production floor and a sales rep sold this location, yeah. I'd be like, this is the location. We sell this one, this one, even this one. Yeah. A lot easier to execute. So just be aware. A lot of things we can do on this bag. What can you actually do in a production atmosphere and, and do it at scale and really make this a big part of the business? But I think, you know, we've had so many successes here. Um, and then this, of course, is a home run. This was a double home run because you did it with DTG and then we covered it with, with three, DTF. Yeah. And then, DTF. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and then we covered it with this great patch, which was a perfect match for the bag. But this is a desirable location. These upgrades are fantastic. Um, this is really good to know because I think people gravitate to this. But like you had mentioned, you have to make the sacrifice of losing some of the foam pad or do you want all foam? Yeah. I think you want to go the original bag. And, and right? I would, and I'd probably hit this, right? Yeah. I would just kind of put something in between there, load it on that four by four platen, use this complete strap to hit that branding if you want it on that side of the bag and leave the, the straps in there. Yeah, because you can separate this. That's a, that's a, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what do you think? I, 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 I will tell you, I will hand you the trophy you keep taking on all these challenges. Um, this is, uh, this was great. And this is a long time coming. You did well. Now I cannot you be know? stressed out and enjoy yeah. the rest of my day. Exactly. We conquered the kitchen sink. I love it. So kitchen sink available at SNS Activewear. You'll see the links below. Josh, thank you. This Appreciate is a lot it. of fun. We'll see you on the next episode.